Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Try. My name is Retromation. This is Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire, a roguelike deck builder that I'm very excited to be checking out here today. Looks quite good, has good reviews. So in we're going to go to see what this is all about. What have I gotten myself into? Welcome to Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire. In Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire, you have to clear each stage of this phantom infested place by starting here and making your way to here. Less explaining, more action. Let's jump into battle. Fight and defeat a wandering phantom. Okay. Ha, ah, what a pathetic phantom. Let's obliterate its pathetic existence. On the field, there are enemy cards. And an empty space for your... Oh, and empty spaces for your cards. Seeing is believing, so let's try playing. Okay. Attack, plus three damage if the card is one of the first two cards on the field. Interesting. Gain two chrysalis status, which is at end of phase, gain four barrier. All right. I will say this is already doing some different stuff in the roguelike deck builder space. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how this pans out. What the heck do we got going on here? Isn't it simple? The cards in the field are always activated from left to right. But here's the catch. Every card will enter a cooldown status and you need to wait to use them again. Luckily, each card's cooldown automatically decreases at the start of every phase. So is there no drawing? Is there no RNG drawing? Interesting. We'll see. Also, each card's level represents its cooldown duration, so make sure you read them carefully. The level is the cooldown. Now let's take a look at some other cards. The number of attack, the number on the attack cards displays the attack power. And the number on magic cards display the barrier's power. Cards with no numbers have special skills that may give buffs or debuffs. And each status is displayed here. Now that we cover the basics, let's try defeating this phantom. Recover 4 HP. Okay. Attack level 5, so it's going to go on cooldown for 5 turns. 2 times damage if the opponent has barrier, which they do seem to. Alright. Goodbye, nerd. Nice work. Thank you. Make sure you take rewards after defeating a phantom. How dare you <laughs> call me out like that. Attack uh, this, and the next attack card will ignore barrier. Interesting. Some Sapphire of the Phantom Rose 2 variety. That's it. Now learn the rest on your own. You seem smart after all. Thanks. Good luck. Have fun. Let's meet again sometime. Well, all right. Just like that. That's a nice, you know, straight to the point, cut to the chase tutorial. I like that. Clear reward. We got some diamonds and stuff. Okay. I'll let it play out. Huh. Okay, uh, Wake up! Thank Valera, I thought you were dead. A talking cat! Huh? Eh? You got a problem with that? Never mind your name. My name. Who? Where? <laughs> Did you bump your head somewhere? I can't believe this. Sorry, uh... I found something. A student ID. Aria of Marion Academy, huh? You're much smaller than I would have expected for a student here. Small? Yeah, but there's no time for this. My name's... <laughs> Sophie. Listen, if, as fellow survivors, we'll escape the school together, got it? The wreck is a school? Are you listening? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> you better get used to it. We'll see many more like this. What do you mean, get used to it? It's a dead body. Pay your specs and let's make sure death isn't in vain. And take anything you might find useful. It's time to move. Well, okay. We even got some visual novel in there. I feel like you can't have an art style like this and not slap in some visual novel. It's just not legally allowed. Legally. So we have, this is our actual, like, our map. And we have the option between fighting a wandering phantom or fighting a wandering phantom. And it looks like the, oh, well, it's not going to converge, but we can't see ahead of us. So yeah, interestingly enough... I don't know how we're gonna how we deal with these if these are random or what or if we can find a way to change these, but it seems as though there's there's actually no randomness 
to this. We have our cards here all at the same time, but that doesn't mean we can spam them. Attack plus three damage if the previous or next card is an attack. Damage uh, barrier and HP by the same amount if there's another revolution in the deck. Attack and raise the power of this card by one. Seems like a very workable thing to slot in there right now. Attack by the damage of six plus the position of this card on the playing field. Basically, the question right now is, does it... Um, Do my cooldowns come back? Or do, like, you know, if we go into the next fight, I'll take that. Attack twice. Do we go into the next combat with the cooldowns still set? Search the area to find treasures or... Select a point of interest. How about there? Classroom Cafe. Frilly costumes and student-made signboards catch your eyes while your stomach growls for food. Search for food or drink. Look for a drink. It's probably a potion. Luck increased by 8%. You find nothing but remain hopeful. A fateful encounter may await. So we've got like a random event? Of course. Yeah, don't eat me! We won't. Oh, you're not phantoms. You're a cat and... A half wire rat? I'm not a cat. I'm not just any cat. I'm I never expected to run into other survivors. I'm so happy. We didn't expect to either. You all, please, is there anything you need? I found many things around here. My name's Serena, and I'm sure there's something you might fancy. Found around here? You're the shop. Of course you are. <laughs> so I'll be seeing you often, eh? <laughs> Crimson dice increase your luck by 5%. Arrange the field so that player cards are positioned before enemy cards. Oh, are those locked things enemy cards? Oh, is that what that is? Use it camps and tries to gain 20 soul rows. I'm assuming that's one of these. Uh, it won't hover and show me here, but I'm assuming that that's soul rows, whatever that is. End of the phase, if no attack card was used, reduce additional cooldown for all cards. That seems really useful. Okay. I don't know, man. I think that's going to be fine. Rest at camp to recover your HP. Search to find treasures or... Talk. Clear a silver adventure to talk. I only talk to winners. We definitely should have moved to the other path. Because I don't think we want to go to a camp right after the next combat, but who knows. A student's private locker with a broken lock invites your attention. You understand it's someone else's, but... Pride open. A mana potion. Reset the cooldown of all of your cards. Because, yeah, I was thinking maybe I should have gone down there so I could go... Well, search, search, tent. I'm not worried about it. Camp. Dissolve cards. What does this get me? Dissolve cards to receive sapphires. Uh, I'll admit... I'm kind of curious how much do we get. We gain one for dissolving that. So the issue is that we do have a maximum capacity. That's kind of the um, the catch. Music getting quiet there for a sec. But we also I see a little bit of an arrow there. So the this is the enemy's attacks. Okay, it hasn't you know it was not relevant so far. So it doesn't matter. Previous or next card is an attack card. It doesn't matter if it's an enemy doing it, though. So you're going to be doing attack damage of 3 plus the level of the previous card on the field. Interesting. Gain some barrier, recover some HP. Gain two barrier and a thorn armor. I guess three barrier and raise the duration of a a buff status by two. Reduce incoming damage by the duration of the status, then reduce duration by one. I guess we could try and do something like this since we have the reduced cooldown thing. So this should be five damage. And then you, you do take a little bit of damage back. 
Help me, save me, free me. This is actually really interesting. Gain three fission status. Inflict three shock. And the shock status is... Wait. <laughs> fission status. Inflict three shock when opponent HP is reduced by an attack. Raise the status duration when an opponent uses an attack card. Take damage by the duration of the status. Okay. So more or less, it puts a status effect on me that makes it so when I play attacks, I am in a bit of danger. I do keep my block. Not all of it, but I keep some. Attack twice. Reduce incoming attack damage by the duration of this and then reduce it by one. So kind of going for big hits seems pretty useful. I'll go for it. So we get to play these out first. So we can do some big damage. I'll take two damage, and I think that's just okay. So there's shock status, because we're going to go for a defensive thing now. If the card user has barrier, inflict eight damage. If not, four. Interesting. So we might want to pop that down, and then if we can get an attack here... Damage bear and HP by the same amount. If there's another revolution attack. Hey, meh. Okay. Inflict three shock when opponents... <laughs> so I am going to take damage. But I kind of want to do an attack here. Uh, it's helpful because we can get rid of that guard. It's gonna. We're going to hurt a little bit, but I think it's fine. We rip through that, so we don't take the damage from that, but we do take shock status damage. So the good thing is we can go for heals, destroy opponent's barrier, and reduce the duration of all status by one. Gain four hardened. So I could kill. Hardened, reduce incoming damage by the duration of the status. If I go for the kill, we got a problem in a way. I'll go for the heal. Because, like, I want to get this health back up, right? Since I have this ability to recover four, if we can sneak that in there, that's really, really helpful. And then we'll go for the slice at the end, which might be enough to kill anyways. So, you have, oh, you have, you're up at four. Yep, that goes through because it's in the final position that does ten damage. Destroy opponent's barrier and reduce the duration of all status by one. Or we could re-roll. I feel like let, let's... Alright. Fine. <laughs> Do you get a card from their deck? Is that what's going on? This is really interesting. I actually am super into it right now. Change skin. Okay. Oh, I can't change it? Blade Mage. Apparently that's a whole separate thing. Dark Banner. Weapons. Of course. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. Praise be. I'm living the anime life. Attack and recover HP by position of this card. On the field. Attack for four and then recover to health. Look to bleeding, take damage by two times the duration of the status effect. So a block is tempting. So this is still on cooldown. That is good to know. So we block a bit here. We are going to take that bleed and it's not great. Reduce their barrier by half before I even do anything. I mean, I could kill. I could definitely kill. Attack and inflict two bleeding regardless of the card user's buff status if barrier opponent's barrier is destroyed. Interesting. 
can't actually get enough barrier. I think we go for the kill then. Does this get a permanent power raise? Attack, raise the attack power of this card when cooldown of any card in the deck is reduced or reset by a card or skill. That's so good for us because of the, uh, the unique relic we got. If no attack card was used, reduce additional uh, cooldown for all cards. That's super good. Rescue a student from a powerful high phantom. Yes. Baby bear. Well, hello, powerful phantom. At the end of the phase, reduce HP by the amount. Reduce HP. I'm assuming mine? It's got to be mine, right? Not yours? Attack plus three damage if it's one of the first two cards on the field. Immediate concern. So we can reduce some cooldowns. When attacked, reduce incoming damage by two. When, status, when the status is, expires, the status owner dies. Interesting. So we can try and remove that in a smidge in here. So every, all the cooldowns go down. Recover HP by four. Destroy their barrier and reduce their status is... is Kind of interesting. We obviously want to do it in a different order. Because if we can get rid of their adrenaline, status owner dies. Attack plus five if the opponent's... If HP is lower than the opponent's. <laughs> Destroy opponent's barrier and activate scramble. The next phase field is rearranged so the opponent's cards are positioned at the back. Is that good? Is that a good thing for you to have happen? I, I guess I would have assumed no. But yeah, since we're waiting on the adrenaline, I actually think we just stall it out here. Raise duration of buff status. Increase existing barrier by the position field. So we go for the cleanse and then we go for, no, we go for the heal and then the cleanse, just in case the combat ends. Reduce it, and then it gets re reduced again, and we get a free win. Hey, really interesting there. Another cleanse. Inverse strike, attack, then reduce the cooldown of magic cards. Interesting. Attack, 38% chance to reset this card's cooldown after the attack. Gain two overheat and attack up. Overheat being recover health by four times the number of attack cards used. At the end of the phase... Lose 2 HP if no attack card was used. Interesting. It doesn't say that the overheat status goes down. It doesn't say that the status goes down. But gaining 2 overheat, I would imagine it lasts 2 turns. Actually, I'm not super sold. Inverse Strike is interesting. I think I'm going to go for a reroll, though. Inflict damage by 3 plus the duration of opponent's debuff status, then increase its duration by 1. That's the opposite of what we're kind of playing with right now. Attack and activate Burnout. Reduce the duration of opponent's buff status by 1. Increase existing barrier by the... Okay. Barrier being my shield by the position of the card. Attack, inflict two bleeding, regardless of the card user's buff status. If you, I mean, I guess I go with this one. Don't want to just keep re-rolling. That is indeed Soul Rose. We got Ballet Shoes. Prevents accidental phantom encounter during a search. We also heal 10 HP. Well, hello. The next phase field is rearranged, so their cards are pushed at the back. I mean, we can absolutely just... Papia here. Attack. Raise the attack power of this card whenever any cooldown is placed. Can't I just, like, kill? So, wait. 
That was six plus... Oh, shoot. I meant to do uh, this one. That's fine. It shouldn't really matter. Watch. Cancel the card after this if it's an opponent attack card. So, I mean, that's going to hurt. We'll just put on the barrier. Heal barrier. We'll reset some cooldowns. This card's going to get stronger. And we can get the kill here if we want. You know what? Thorn and Barrier seems like a pretty good call. We also reset our cooldowns even more. Gear up for later. While doing damage on the Reflect. Well, we should get a pretty easy win here. Bonk. Okay. Another Slice. I do think Slice is good. Rest and face a powerful crown phantom. Recover 12. This is a passive. Reset all cooldowns. Yeah, we'll just have to keep that in mind. My good evening. I never expected to meet you two here. Wait. You know us? Of course not. But it's an odd encounter in such a place. Do you not agree? I suppose. Who or what are you then? Is that a serious question? It's... Uh... My name is Reverie. No need to be formal with me. You made that up just now, didn't you? Does it matter? You never introduced yourselves either. You have no grounds to complain about my introduction. My name's Arya. This is Sylphie. Nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine. However, I must take my leave. Before I go, take this charm. It's dangerous out there. Consider it a friendly gesture. Do you not want to come with us? Oh, don't worry. I'm not alone. Throw it away if you think it's suspicious. If we meet again, I hope we can help each other. What a weird girl. I don't sense any curse on what she gave us, but let's be careful. Who knows what she is, uh, being just able to wander around by herself. From a distance, you notice a powerful phantom resting. You take a moment to determine whether or not you're ready to confront the evil. Heal 20 HP and face the crown phantom. Or heal to full and ambush to reduce their health. That takes 20 gems. I don't need that trash. I don't need to reduce your health. Cancel the card after this card if it is an opponent's card. Shoot. I mean, that's a level 7 son of a gun, so... We should probably get going on... Oh, I was hoping Dyna Pierce would be... You don't have any block for me to get rid of. I mean, 8 damage is probably the best thing we could do right there. And then we want to play something that is fine to get cancelled. We could let you cancel one of these. Do I not care about the block? It's like a whole turn being used on it. It's four damage. I think that's fine. I think we can let some, some acceptable damage come through. Yeah, we don't have any... I bet you there's going to be ways to readjust this stuff on the fly. I don't even know if it gets... The cooldown gets reduced or not. Does it go on cooldown? No. Cancel does not... Oh, it does. It does put it on cooldown. We have two. Gain a bloodlust. Inflict one bleeding to all does not replace existing debuff status. So that's the thing. They can only have a couple. Inflict bleeding when an opponent's HP is reduced by an attack. Gain four barrier and give own status... Debuff status to the opponent. Inflict bleeding. Okay. And inflict a bleeding to all. Duration of all stats. This is interesting. This is interesting. We could just say screw it and not have to deal with it. Reduce duration of all opponents' buff status by one. I feel like that's maybe the way to go. We pop that in there so we can start getting it charged up, and then we do this to reduce their buff status. So they don't have it. I do have the bleed still for what that's worth, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Attack twice if the opponent has no barrier. Otherwise, attack by the amount of damage of five plus the barrier amount. 
I mean, that's going to hurt. That's obviously going to hurt, but we can obviously also kill. So position of the card on the field and another revolution in the deck is an important thing to note. It means we need just two of them here as options. We don't need to play them both. Theoretically, we can kill here, though. It's going to hurt. But it's going to hurt you more. New card unlocked. Sharp strike. Great. Thank you. Attack by the damage of 8 plus the current phase number. Gain 4 barrier. Activate burnout. Attack. Recover HP by 2 times the number of attack cards on the field. I like that. 3-0 evade. Evade attack and lose status. When the status is replaced, add the remaining duration to the new buff status. That seems game breakable. Recover additional 4 HP at camps and shrines. Gain barrier by the phase number. Use in battle. What, is this a one-time use? Surely not. Heal 20 HP for 8. I think that that is worth it. Dissolve cards. We are at max. We could probably get rid of a hollow strike. And I don't know if we need two slices. I'm not using deep slash right now. It also is a little bit disynergistic due to the fact that we are reducing debuffs. So I'll leave two slots open. Stage two. Oh. I'm going to go for the elite after this. Attack. Attack. Steal four sapphires if opponent's barrier is destroyed. I can't get enough barrier, can I? No, but I can get the zero status evade. So much is on cooldown. <laughs> so two barrier. We could go up to... We could go up to six, so it'll obviously get broken. We'll go for the zero evade, which will also reset a lot of my cooldowns here. Works for me. Inflict two shock. Raise status duration when you use an attack card. Take damage by the duration of the status. Reduce duration of all status by one. All right. Play a little defensive here. We'll uh, reset this business. Okay, good. Gain 8 Barrier and increase the attack power of cards. Gain 3 Escape when status expires. Ooh, okay. Alright. Shock status. I may need to just go through with this here. I don't have anything that pierces armor unless I had another revolution. Assassinate. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't get away with this this turn. So maybe what I do is I play. Oh, I can't even cleanse, and I'm not gonna want to cleanse next turn. That is interesting here. This is a magic card. It's not classified as an attack card either. Yikes, man. Let's just go for a big hit. Yeah. Okay, so that status is gone. They are the one who needs to play the attack card for that problem to happen. So we should be fine. If we're willing to play some just 
play some cards. I think we just go for our dinky attack, followed by the positional. Unless I want to play a 9 damage card and a heal. I don't think it's worth it right now. I think let's just get the guarantee. Attack twice if used in an odd-numbered phase. I'll take that. Don't want to spend too much on rerolls right now. We're soon going to run out of slots here. Getting some extreme, like, Danganronpa vibes here. Which, yes, Retromation knows Danganronpa. Gain four barrier and activate Scramble. Next phase's field is rearranged. Yep, yep, yep. At the end of the phase, give everyone three barrier. When the status expires, the status owner dies. Okay. So I guess we're probably going for a stall strat once again. We kind of just seem to really have that being a pretty strong, reliable thing. I guess we'll do this first. Because they probably will go for an attack next turn. Reduce the duration of all status. So two damage attack. If opponent barriers destroyed, attack once more. Oh wait, we have seven. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank you for that. I wish. Raise the attack power of this card when cooldown of any card in the deck is reduced or reset by a card skill. I'm assuming while it's sitting here. So if we did something kind of of the nature of this. Does it go up right now? Because I didn't play anything. So everything, these should get reset. It's six. Raise attack power of this card when cooldown of any card in the deck is reduced or reset by card skill. By card skill. That's the important note there is that this does not count. It'd be too easy. Give opponent five barrier. Okay. Ignore barrier, attack, and inflict damage equal to the opponent's barrier amount plus one. Understood. So that's why you want my barrier gone. So I think what we're going to do... So it's eight damage. This is... That's an attack. We could do nine damage with that. And we can heal up. While playing an attack card, we can heal up here. Oh my god, I still have the dodge. Woo! Woo, we're climbing. Reduce the duration of a debuff status by two. Increase existing barrier on the field by the position of this card. Three barrier. And raise the duration of a buff status. All right. All right. So we're going to go for a smacking here first. And then we're going to cleanse all of their barrier at the end of the turn. We could do a murder by putting in the six plus there. I don't know why I just wanted to, I wanted to kill him a different way. Attack this and the next card will ignore barrier. Yeah, all right. All right. I should have gone for the kill. This, I was playing with my food. Screw me. What's this here? Blade level. Okay. So we could do... This is basically 8 damage right now. I don't really want to get more barrier at this point. We'll heal up and then we'll get the kill next turn. can go for a three and then a little bit of that they're gonna die anyways aren't they wait no they didn't die i thought when they lost that status effect they would die we could have done that better attack and then reduce the cooldown of attack cards now there we go 
Swift Strike seems really good. Attack, increase the damage the, by the level of the next card on the field. That's really interesting, but these do seem really, really good. For one, phase one, reduce cooldown of cards used is reduced by two. Ooh. There's so many really cool ways that this, like, these mechanics interact. Mysterious crystal ball glowing with a violet hue invites you to a room decorated with creepy ornaments. Luck decreased by 5%. You're unsure of anything, if anything has changed inside you. I want to fight. I want to go for the fight, fight, rest. I like that. I have 17 cards. Did my... What is that? What's the penalty of that? It says I have 17 out of 16. Gain 4 barrier. Activate burnout. Reduce the duration of opponent's buff status. Increase existing... Wait, increase existing barrier by the field position of this card. Okay. I guess we could just go for like a, a nice clean stack up here. Because it happens after. You have Chrysalis status, so you gain Barrier. For Barrier, activate Scramble. Okay. So we could actually do this and then reduce it one more. You'll have zero Barrier on the next turn. And then we get to go first, and you are going to be attacking yourself here. No, because they're they're doing burnout, so they reduced my spike. So this card was useless. Or not useless, just not good. Okay. All right, now we go for the bur big murder. Now we turn and burn. You gave me the ability to go uh, go last here. Wild choice. Thank you very much. Attack and reduce the cooldown. I mean, that's all we need. Okay. Attack, reduce the cooldown duration of this card by two if the user has no barrier. So, wh why can I just keep taking cards when it says deck 18 out of 16? What is, the, what is the penalty that I'm missing here? I know that there has to be one. Unless it's saying that's the... That can't be the minimum, because we've had less. Attack, if the next card in the field is, uh, is an opponent attack card, then gain three barrier. Gain attack up if status duration is an odd number. That actually brings me to an interesting spot with this. Oh, but you got an extra increase. I helped you out, you son of a gun. Is it just one attack up? Attack up if status duration is an odd number. Increase the attack up cards by one. Is it one per status effect? I, I don't know on that one. Okay, so I think that we can't really... I don't think we want to juggle that. I think we just want to murder. So that's still on cooldown. I think we could go for... Do the attack and heal. Yeah, I think we just we just do a big murder. And then we have first position. We go for close combat, and we are all good. Heal up a little bit as well. We should put an attack there. Okay. We'll definitely want to... Deck over limit. There it is. So you get, now you have to... That's a very... I really like that. I'll get rid of Blade. It's a very clever way of doing that. What cards are we not using that much? Swift Strike I think is good. 
Do we need two slices? Maybe not. Attack and activate burnout. I could get rid of that. The cooldown is pretty big. We don't need two of the wilds. I know we don't need to go under, but I kind of want to. Heal 20 HP. Don't really want to do that. Aren't you literally like a character in Skullgirls? What's going on? Uh, Gain four barrier. Gain three chase status. Recover four HP if opponent's HP is greater. We definitely go for some some Moida. So that should buff up the Dyna Pierce. I think a slice seems fine. It's a nine damage. So yeah, reducing that, it does work with Dyna Pierce now, so that we have that working. Inflict damage by four plus the duration of your opponent's debuff status, then inflict four fear. So I can't... Ooh. Two times damage if opponent has any barriers. So what we do is a zero evade. That's a no-brainer. A no-brainer. Attack twice if used in odd numbers... Is that a big deal? Is that why I might be able to ditch that too soon here? I can definitely kill. Next turn, but I don't know if I can kill this turn. Oh, there we go. Fear status. Should have looked at that better. Reduce HP by the amount of the opponent's opponent's buff status duration. Okay. End of phase. Cancel the card after this card if it's an opponent attack card. So I can't use my heal, my attack at the end. Because I can kill. It's only one attack. Oh, you jerk. All right, well, whatever. My heal's on cooldown anyways, isn't it? Yeah, close combat's on cooldown. trying to think if we should stall to heal. Because I can obviously kill. But then I'm 9 down, which feels like a mistake. I just don't know. Reduce HP. It doesn't say do blank damage. So I'm just going to kill. I'm going to accept the 9 down. We got here. Gain two rage. Raise the attack power of cards by one when HP is reduced by an attack. I'll take it. Summon Luna to buy cards or a fateful encounter. Sure. All right, have you seen this before? It's a fairy coin. A coin that can summon the fairy from the Ruby Trading Company. What can we buy from them? Hopefully things that can help us out there. They're greedy, witty little fairies, but let's see if they can help us. Thank you for summon. I'm Luna. Please take a look. Meat carve burst. Reduce opponent's HP by the amount of their barrier, then reduce their barrier by half. That seems very good. Attack and then recover HP by the position of this card on the field. I feel like that actually seems pretty good. I don't think I need two of them. Chain strike seems good. So do I have two rerolls per shop, or what's up with that? Another close combat seems good. Attack, increase the damage by the level of the next card on the field. Barrier and coil, gain barrier by the amount. Huh? Gain it when attacked, gain barrier by the amount attacked, and then lose status. Gotcha. Five coil? Seems busted. We're going to have to do some big retool in here. But it's kind of interesting since we can make our deck really thick before like a boss. Select up to three cards. Oh. 
Use in battle, reduce the duration of a debuff status by three. Great. Should probably use some of these things, but... Heal the fallen ambush. Nah. Eight damage, who cares? When attacked, gain a four barrier and lose this status. And lose a status. Add three stress cards to the opponent's deck. Does nothing, disappears when used or after battle. How is that a problem? Does it take up, does it automatically get played? Yeah, I guess I'm not sure. Okay, we have so many options now. It's absurd. Attack on the roosters, cool them all attack cards. Seems good. If I'm willing to just go for a little bit of a smacking, which I sure as hell am. When attack gain four barrier. It's not the it's not coil. Okay. I'm willing to take the three here. To do just a truly large amount of damage. Dyna Pierce is doing 12 now all of a sudden, you know? Pretty spicy. Gain four barrier, reduce the duration of debuff status by two. Inflict damage by four times the number of stress cards in your opponent's deck. Understood. And zero evades on cooldown. Do I care is, I guess, the question I have right now. Do I care? It's a lot of damage. I don't have my ability to do this. If they're four individuals, then it could actually be really good to go for Thorn Barrier. Otherwise, we're in a weird spot. Because I can't kill with Dyna Pierce. We have for like 20, 20 after? We'll see if this works how I think. Big if true. Okay. It's not that much healing. Attack and recover HP by the position of the field. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Gain three barrier, add two stress cards to the opponent's deck. Okay, we're going to have to be careful. We're going to have to go in, basically. Three barrier, two stress cards to the opponent's deck. Gain four barrier, increase the attack power of cards by the number of attack cards on the field. Minus one. What gain? Wait, when attack, gain barrier by the amount attacked and lose status. That, we seriously get five of those? That seems so wrong. That seems unbelievably wrong. If I could get another star blade, if I could get two star blades, that'd be busted. Can we just kill? We have 21 damage, so we actually don't have lethal on that. Do we have anything that does more? than nine. No. Not right now. We do not have anything right now. So, I guess I'll just... I think I'll just do it anyways. Pretty darn good. Gain three vampiric fangs. Recover four HP when an opponent is re HP is reduced by an attack. Oh, you poor sap. Attack twice by the damage of three plus the duration of the card user's buff status. Okay. Irrelevant. You're so dead. Unlocking deep claw. I mean, I like that one. It seems good. 
Attack, increase the damage by the level of the card of the next field. Destroy the opponent's barrier. Activate Scramble. I mean, Provoke does seem good. I don't really want to take either of these right now, and I don't really feel like re rolling. I don't have any space. Increases deck limit by one. How do I add more inventory space? Now, this looks like a microtransaction screen, but I know it's not. Right? Surely not. It's not. I don't think it is. I just haven't needed anything. I guess we'll skip then. Dissolve cards in order to leave. We definitely have some stuff we can dissolve. We don't need two wild combats, first of all. I think it's time to get rid of Revolution. I'll get rid of Blitz. We don't have to get rid of anything else. I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna use rage. Quick mission. Spend sapphire to heal HP at camp or shrine. Dissolve two cards of the camp or shrine. Is this an in-run thing? Wait, what's going on? Is that a meta currency or is that... Huh. That's that gem. Very interesting. Dissolve two cards at camp or shrine. I mean, if I'm wild, I could go. For, I could do that again. I'm gonna say no because this is synergistic. Fine. Eh, yeah, right, pretty well. Guess my body remembers what I've learned. Don't you think it's safer to stay put until help arrives? Well, unfortunately, the school has turned into a phantom hive. Phantom hive? You remember learning anything about the false god Nox? Uh, god that promised us immortality long ago. But turn people into phantoms instead? And Goddess of Lora sacrificed herself to seal him, right? Right. But his power still lingers. And when his toxic man is con concentrated into an area, he can turn people into phantoms. And those phantoms will turn more lives into phantoms and so forth. It's a phantom hive. Shouldn't the people outside do something faster? That's the thing. Nox's concentrated mana forms a barrier between the Phantom Hive and the world outside, so it's neither easy to get in or out the Phantom Hive naturally until it dissipates. We won't be able to escape. It's, uh, it's not easy, not impossible. Point is, the f it's foolish to wait for help. Who knows how long it'll take or even if they're trying. It can't be. Don't worry, just follow my lead. With your talent and my keen sense of mana, I'm sure we can find a weak spot that we can exit from. I promise. Well, all right. This is one of those where the runs... I mean, I do know we could definitely... As we learn the game more and more, we could speed these processes up a hell of a lot more. But is there a... There's a save and quit. Good. That is an important thing. My room... How do I unlock more? I need to know. Okay, there's a lot of this stuff. Shop fire card pack. I'm I'm trying to check. Can be earned by playing the game. Yes. It looks as this stuff is all set up. I'm so confused. Because I want to double check. I can't tell. It It's set up like there's microtransactions. But I don't think there is. I don't think it's that kind of game. One sec. Yeah. No, it does not look as though there is any microtransactions. This is all just playing, playing the game. And it looks like there are two classes. Fire card pack. Add these to the adventure. Yeah, there's two classes. Blade and Mage. Very, very curious. Uh, I'm impressed by it. I don't know. I really, really liked it. 
I really change your wallpaper. I mean, I'm good with that one, I guess. I'm really impressed by this game. I, wow, I don't know. It came out of nowhere for me, but I really enjoyed my time with it. I would not mind playing more of it. Uh, what have I clicked? I've clicked the... That's the patch notes. Gotcha. Would not mind playing more of this. I, Which was not entirely what I expected. I liked it. Go check it out. I know that people really liked Phantom Rose 1 as well. So hey, maybe go check that out too. But this is out right now on Steam. It is not early access or anything. It's just out, out, which, you know, for a roguelike, see right down there, 1.0.1 for a roguelike deck builder. That never happens. So, hey, go check it out. That's a gun. Hold on. Thank you for watching. Check out the channel for roguelikes and more every single day. <laughs> if that is a genre you're into, especially if you like roguelike deck builders, probably not many better channels on this dang old website to subscribe to. I'll make sure you check out all the greatest new ones that come out. Thank you, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.